here with me now because I've been to the mountaintop. Gilly is a brew bar based in Stone Mountain, Georgia, which is the home of the rebirth of the KKK. Gilly serves in that tension. What makes Gilly unique are the elixirs, and elixirs are inspired from my Caribbean background. They are homemade concoctions that include bitters, natural herbs that are then brewed together to create medicines that cure sickness. This same concept has been embedded into our, our DNA. We use coffee and tea-based elixirs as a vehicle for storytelling. Every season we drop five new beverages that tell a story that are important to us and our community. In this video, we will take you into how we create these elixirs, the storytelling of them, and how you can make them at home. These are all new elixirs that we have released at our bar this winter season. Black history is important to us as a black owned business. We honor the triumphs and struggles of African Americans throughout US history and today. This season, we hope to honor the writers. James Baldwin is our inspiration for this season. James Baldwin was a writer who gave language and literature to the cry for justice and the civil rights movement, a cry that is still happening today. Baldwin often used scripture, which was an early influence, to convey certain points he sought to make. In the spirit of honoring that, we use scripture to also influence our creation of drinks. Both James Baldwin and the Book of James had strong words, one to America and one to the church. The Book of James is a calling out of sorts, to live what you say you believe. This season, we are pinning words that remind us to live what we believe. Each elixir will be called a chapter in honor of who James Baldwin was as a writer and in conjunction with a number of books in the Book of James. When we were thinking about Baldwin, we thought about what influenced him. Harlem, music, scripture, his unique style, his drinks of choice, and what he conveyed. We wanted our ingredients to communicate a bittersweet feel for the truth spoken from James and James. Elixir chapter one. This elixir is based off of James chapter one. We use silver needle tea as a base to represent the silversmith testing of silver by fire. The flavor that you experience in tea best comes out under heat. Baldwin's writings were produced and perfected under intense pressure. We also use fish bouillon to represent the testing and temptation of life, also seen in James chapter one. The tea we use is silver needle tea that we got from Just Add Honey, but you can find this at any of your local grocery stores. You take one gram of the tea and add two ounces of water at 165 degrees Fahrenheit. For the broth, you take a quarter of a cube of fish bouillon. You can again find this at any of uh, your local grocery stores. Um, you add half a cup of water and 25 grams of demerara. Add a full sprig of sage and bring everything to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, you take it off the heat and let it cool. Elixir chapter two. James Baldwin's style and swagger influence just drink. There's something magical about brewing coffee in the morning. James's morning ritual may have included a cup of coffee or tea, but most definitely a morning cigarette. To make this elixir, uh, we recommend you smoke the glass. In the past, we've smoked herbs or spices, uh, but in this case, we're gonna use coffee to add a nice, deep, toasty aroma. The brewing method is an AeroPress, and um, we use a double filter. So don't forget to pre-wet. 
The coffee we use is uh, from Black and White Coffee Roasters. It's a Colombian coffee. And uh, we use 24 grams with 130 grams of water. Uh, we brew that at boiling point, 212 degrees Fahrenheit. You let the water sit and for two minutes, then you slowly press. Then we add a black jam. This particular one is a black sugar ginger tea. You can bring that to a boil, stir it down, let it cool. All of these ingredients you can find at a local farmer's market near you. Elixir chapter three. This elixir is inspired by a quote from James Baldwin that goes, God gave Noah the rainbow sign. No more water, fire next time. Fire next time is also a book written by Baldwin. James chapter three also speaks on the tongue being a fire capable of setting a forest ablaze, just as Baldwin did. There are two main components to this drink, cold brew and the jam. Uh, for the cold brew, we use our Gilly Blend, which has bright, buttery, brown sugar notes. Uh, you can feel free to use whatever cold brew you would like at, from your local uh, coffee shop and or make your own. Um, we like to use a one-to-one -one ratio of one pound of coffee to one gallon of water. We let it steep overnight for 24 hours. To make the chili pepper pomegranate jam, we use peppers and half a pomegranate. So you take five peppers, you can feel free to cut them up, um, and you would cut this pomegranate in half and scoop out the pomegranate seeds into a pot. Um, you would then add four cups of cane sugar and one cup of pomegranate juice. You would let that simmer to a boil and it should look like this when it is done. Elixir chapter four. Here's a quote by James Baldwin that says, to be a Negro in this country and to be relatively conscious is to be in a rage almost all the time. We use the Bolivardier bourbon Negroni cocktail as an inspiration for this beverage. In a shaker, we add cold brew coffee. Um, it's a nitrogen infused cold brew, four ounces. We then add a non-alcoholic Campari, which is composed of three dashes of orange bitters, 0.5 ounce of maraschino syrup, 0.25 ounce of pomegranate juice, and a sprig of tarragon. We also created an in-house vermouth, which is composed of coriander simple syrup. We steeped a one-to-one -one ratio of cane sugar and water with the coriander seed. And we add 0.5 ounce of white wine vinegar. Last but not least is our homemade jam, which is made up of a whole grapefruit. We add the juice and the pulp, one cup of sugar, and three ounces of maple syrup. You want to bring it all to a boil and let it simmer until it comes to a jam consistency. Thank you.
Elixir chapter 5. This drink is inspired by James chapter 5, which speaks on being patient and suffering, just as a farmer waits for the rain. We use alkaline water to symbolize the patience of a farmer who waits for rain. With this drink, we honor the heroes of the civil rights movement and the heroes of today. They remain resilient and faithful to the mission, even while enduring great suffering. They endure with patience to see the reins of justice. The main components of this drink are matcha, simple syrup, and a tonic syrup. Um, for the matcha, we use a culinary matcha from Mizuba. Um, we steep uh, the matcha in alkaline water. So you take two ounces of alkaline water, which you can get from any local grocery store, um, and three grams of the matcha. We then add 1.5 ounces of star anise simple syrup. We make the simple syrup with a one to one ratio. So one cup of cane sugar to one cup of alkaline water. This is what star anise um, looks like, just for your knowledge. We then add 0.25 ounces of tonic syrup, which we get from 1821 bitters. And you add this to the beverage and you shake it with ice and serve it dirty. These elixirs are about listening to the scribes of that time and today. But it's not just listening. We hope that you apply what they have taught us. Now that we've shared the story, it's your turn to make these elixirs.